This is a Government Week in Review, a look at the major stories for the week. I am Sherry Ann Noel. In the headlines, Grenada implements phased rollout of e-testing for CPEA exams and Empower program graduates 400 young men. We will be back after this break. Have you noticed an increase or decrease in your electricity bill? You know that changes in the fuel and non-fuel rates affect your bill. You should also be aware that changes in household activities affect your bill. Ask yourself these questions. Have the rates changed? Have there been more people at your home? Have your children been on holiday? Have you used your fan or air conditioning unit more often to beat the heat? Are any of your electrical appliances or equipment faulty? Have you added any new appliances such as transformers, water heaters, or pumps? Make it a habit to understand any changes on your electricity bill. For more factors that affect your bill, visit www.grenlec.com. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture says it has been able to successfully implement the phased rollout e-testing for the CPA examinations at selected schools. 40 students wrote the exams online. They currently attend Mount Pleasant Government in Karakou, Mount Morris Anglican and Mount Rose SDA Primary. 1,877 students wrote the exams on Thursday and Friday. Sarana Mitchell has the details. It was much easier because I don't have to had like has a shade off any question that's not to turn back and click uh, an answer if I wanted to um choose the next answer. It was much better. It was good. It was easier to select your answers. It was very good. I was very nervous at first but then when I started doing it I was I was really um Flabbergasted, I might say, because it was really easy. So it was really good doing the CPU on the paper, um, on the computer. I was nervous at first because I didn't be quite sure what I was going to do. Then after, then people come to help us, and I feel so happy because the computer make make me finish more quicker. And if it was the paper, I would have been inside right now. Grenada joined Anguilla, Suriname, and Saba as the fourth territory in the region administering the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA, online. Mount Morris Anglican, Mount Rose SDA Primary, and Mount Pleasant Government in Karakou were chosen to start the phased rollout of the CPEA testing online. First of all, you have to determine if the students have the digital skill set to do the exam online. Right. Because we are starting from scratch, we had to do an assessment with all the schools that were selected to determine their digital skills. Right. Once the schools pass that stage, then we start with the training. And of course, after this training, um, the district IT officers reported that the students took the training very easy. You Do you know why? They are digital natives. So it, they were doing the, 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 the exam online and navigating the, the platform very, very easy. Dikoto further explains the criteria used to choose the schools that participated in the inaugural CPEA online testing. So the schools were selected based on their size, their location, and their current involvement with it, um, ICT integration throughout the year. I, I must bring to your attention that we have selected more than three schools to start with, but through consultation with parents, teachers, um, principals, we have narrowed down to three schools at this point in time. And I, I hasten to say as well that there are schools who are calling to be a part of the CPA exams online. So we have schools already in line for next year. Principals shared favorably about the experience. Well, I would encourage all principals of the primary school, teachers, peers, to get on board with it because it is the direction where we're heading. Like it or not, for the next year or two, we have no choice if we do it. 
to get the children on board now and, and, and encourage them because it's a much easier platform to work with. When you're shading, you can shade the wrong question. In other words, I always say that they may read question three and go and shoot question four. They may read question two and shoot question three. So it, it is always that element of, of doubt when you have the shading. But with the platform, there ain't no doubt. And you have an issue with one question, if it is, just flag it, get a chance to go back to it. So it is much easier. I encourage them to please use the platform. Well, I don't think they should have any concern because our children are no different from other children at that age in the, in the country. So if our children are very versed, they're able to do the exam on computer without no problems. They're very excited about doing it. So I think all other children should be given the opportunity to do it likewise. I don't think people should have any fears in the children doing the exam on computer. And it's history that's where we're heading. Technology is where the world is moving. And whether we embrace it now, that's where we're heading. And eventually, everyone would be involved in using the technology. And all students soon in Grenada would be exposed to writing exam using gadgets instead of paper based. And therefore, um, we have to get there at some point. So I want to encourage everyone out there, teachers of CPA classes and administrators of schools to embrace the opportunity as early as possible. Even parents, there is no fear in getting on board with um, the use of technology in writing the exam online. There were 19 students sitting the exam at Mount Rose SDA Primary, eight at Mount Pleasant Government in Karakou, and 13 at Mount Morris Anglican. Island-wide, there were 1,877 primary school students from 70 primary schools during the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment in 2023. The students did multiple choice papers in four areas, mathematics, language arts, science, and social studies. Each paper had a duration of 75 minutes. CPEA was introduced by the Caribbean Examinations Council in 2012 when it replaced the common entrance exams. Sarana Mitchell reporting. Thank you, Sarana. Staying on the education front, 400 young men, 25 of whom are inmates at His Majesty's prisons, were given a second chance through the Empower 3.0 program from which they graduated on Thursday. Over the course of the program, the young men were engaged in varying aspects of skills training. Details in this story. 400 young men graduated from the Empower program on Thursday, May 4th, with new skills to help them find employment in high-growth sectors and secure a prosperous future for themselves. Empower is fully funded by the government through the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture. The training is administered through partnerships with a number of stakeholders, the key of which is the National Training Agency, NTA, to equip young men with technical and employability skills. The one-year program provides young men between the ages of 18 to 35 with opportunities for self-empowerment, holistic development, skill certification and employment. Participants engaged in the program acquired life skills, direct skills, and core development training. Acting Prime Minister Honorable Philip Telesford said programs such as Empower will help boost SMEs by providing the necessary skill set as government continues to ensure that the right business environment is in place to nurture such talents. Approximately $4.5 million has been invested in a training and there were approximately 220 of you participating in this training exercise. This represents approximately $20,454 per individual. So the government of Grenada would have invest in invested approximately $20,000 in your individual training. The third cohort of participants also included young men from the disabled community, the result of a partnership with the Grenada National Council for the Disabled, the GNCD. Honorable David Andrew, Minister for Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, who made remarks on behalf of Minister of State in the Ministry, Honorable Ron Redhead, encouraged the young men to excel above their own expectations. You have a golden opportunity. Embrace it. You are not 
a male by chance. You are a male by design. And I want to conclude by saying to you, you are not a man by chance. You are not a man by chance. You are a man by choice. The successful participants will benefit from a grant fund to start their own business. The money will be disbursed through the Small Business Development Unit in the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, UDBIS. For the Government Information Service, I am Eugenia Peters. The objective of the recently held consultation facilitated by the Grenada Allied and Professional Health Council with hairdressers, beauticians, barbers and others in that field was merely to sensitize them on the legalities of the revised SRO 44, health practitioners, allied health professionals license and registration regulations signed into law in December of 2022. Chair of the Grenada Allied and Professional Health Council, Dr. Nicole Fort, says the consultation was never intended to put fear in the minds of the professionals, but more so to further educate them about the required standards to operate in Grenada. The June 30th deadline for certification, Dr. Foot says, is what is legally binding based on the regulations. However, an extension to November 30th, 2023 has been granted. I don't know if there was a misunderstanding but there is something that is saying that by the end of June. So if that was to give them an understanding as to what has to be done, then there is no way you'd be able to do that course between now and the end of June. So can we have some clarity? Because that yes. is where the problem is. The legal framework says six months. This is what I said before, which mm -hmm. take them up. If the, if the decision was given in December, mm -hmm. then January to June right. is six months. Right, that right? is six months. But from your informing right. them last week. Right, or, we have given mm -hmm. them okay. what the legal framework speaks to. Okay. No, it sensitizes. We were supposed to get their concerns okay. as to what is practical. We can't just say, we must say what the legal framework says. Okay. And now that we have gotten it, whether good or bad, in mm -hmm. whichever way, we have taken the decision to extend that period okay. to November 30th, which gives the NTA more time to, to facilitate okay. training and it also gives the persons more time to get themselves up to speed so they will be able to present the documents for registration and license. Am I clear? Okay. If not, All me. right, because <laughs> it, it, it came across as though by June the 30th, That's if what you're not registered or regularized, I shut you down. No, 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 no. That no shutdown was in right. plan. That was a sensitization forum. Okay. So we can Just letting them know what the legalities what, are. Exactly. Okay. And what the legislation spoke to in terms of time frame. But we have now extended that period to November after hearing all the back and forth that has been happening. This is the Government Week in Review. When we return, Culture Minister appeals for more corporate support for Spice Mars. <laughs> Girl, the children are growing up so fast. When I leave here, I am going to take Tevin to get his MMR vaccine. Kayla was supposed to have another appointment for that same vaccine. But Natalie, I'm not sure. On social media, they're saying that it's not safe. Plus, I can afford to miss work. Girl, the vaccines are safe for decades. They protect our children. You got vaccinated. And I'm sure you're all right. Yes, but these diseases aren't out now. Grenada is open to childhood diseases from all over the world. Today, we have a choice to get our children vaccinated or not. Go get it done, girl. It won't take long. I suppose so. Anything for my princess. I want to be protected. Check your doctor or the Ministry of Health to get the information on immunization against childhood diseases, including HPV and polio, and COVID-19 for elderly persons and persons living with non-communicable diseases. Welcome back. Minister for Culture, Honorable Ron Redhead, is appealing for a greater vested interest from Corporate Grenada in the Spice Max product, which he believes has the potential to become the number one festival in the region. 
When he attended the official launch of Spice Mask 2023 recently, Minister Redhead said it is evident that there is room for improvement and growth, but this cannot be achieved through government's investment alone. He added that for the product to evolve into what many believe it can be, there must be an all-hands-on-deck approach. Speaking with the GIS at the official launch of Spice Mask last Friday, Minister Redhead said government has and continues to make significant investment in the carnival product. However, he believes that more can be done if Corporate Grenada is on board. I would like Corporate Grenada to collaborate with the state entity um, that is Spice Mask in a big way and in a serious way, both on the developmental side and then on the marketing side. We have some exciting things to announce soon. We will make some pronouncements in New York when Carnival is launched in uh, the coming weeks. And um, we we believe that it will be indeed the beginning of an evolution. We have done a lot of work in terms of back-end trying to determine where can we get alternative sources of funding, uh, not just through sponsorship, but um, as a government, what can we do, whether we implement something called the festival stacks, whether we look at um, alternative uh, avenues to invest and generate more monies for Spice Mass. One of the things that we discovered is that we need to ensure that we fund the developmental aspects of Spice Mass so that the product that we are marketing is actually developed by Grenadians and is well entrenched in our culture and our behaviors. We have done a lot of work in terms of back-end trying to determine where can we get alternative sources of funding, uh, not just through sponsorship, but um, as a government, what can we do, whether we implement something called the festival stacks, whether we look at um, alternative uh, avenues to invest and generate more monies for Spice Mass. One of the things that we discovered is that we need to ensure that we fund the developmental aspects of Spice Mass so that the product that we are marketing is actually developed by Grenadians and is well entrenched in our culture and our behaviors. Going forward, how important is getting back the aspect of the creativity in Spice Mask, getting the Grenadians to bend their wires and come up with the particular designs? What sort of emphasis will be placed there? Oh, it's very important. This is one of the reasons why we have um, supported and endorsed the uh, partnership between NTA and Oro, the band, to see how we can create a program to teach and train our Grenadians to learn to make our costumes at all Grenadian styles. So it's very important. I think one of the benefits that is going to come out of that, as I mentioned, is that we are going to focus on developmental aspects in addition to promoting the existing culture. So that is going to feed in and over time we expect it to improve the quality of uh, artists, bands and so on locally that we produce. We're seeing the return of the Queen show to the National Stadium. It would be on a Sunday. You, the committee has maintained the, the Marsh Gras in Progress Park. And so on. How do you feel about all of this in terms of development and growth and spreading the, the culture across the, the carnival, I should say, across the island? Well, it augurs well. Um, I think um, last year the attempt to... Uh, have Dimash Gra. Well, it shouldn't be called Dimash Gra, it should actually be called Calypso Finals because Dimash Gra means Big Sunday. Um, but to have the Calypso Finals in um, St. Andrews was a good move. Um, give or take, you would need greater stakeholder involvement to determine whether or not it should be kept there. But um, at this moment, nothing is set in stone. What will be tried here this year may not continue into next year. So it's all in an attempt to do our own research and development to ensure that we get the best fit for the various components of Spice Mass. Chair of the Spice Mass Corporation, Kurt Ross, says the theme evolution chosen for this year's celebrations is not by chance, as there is a need for the product to evolve based on the interest shown. High emphasis, he says, will be placed on the traditional aspect of the mass, taking into consideration the decline in the number of traditional mass bands and masqueraders in recent years. Our emphasis is to be basically 100% on traditional mass because the traditional mass is what makes us unique and different from all of the other countries. So we really need to emphasize and build on that. The short, the Veco, the Wild India, Sailor Mass, as, as you can see here today, we want to really emphasize on that. And, and, and be able to build it back up so at least the younger generation can know that it's part of our culture. The SMC chair also elaborated on the decision to not have the king and queens of the bands in 2023 with the hope of a big return in 2024. In terms of the mass band and, and um, let's say king and queens, 
that is something we definitely want to see back uh, back in a big way. So what we had seen that this year, as you would have heard in terms of the mass bands, they, they <laughs> let's, let, let me put it this way, the association has more or less resigned the body. That is what they had said, you understand, the mass who, and one, one of the conditions in terms of which the government wanted us is like everybody should be in unison as one. So it, we shouldn't consider some band foreign and local, everybody should be one because at the end of the day we look at the best interest of mass, uh, pretty mass in Grenada. So we basically ask them for everybody to come together as one and in, 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 in order to enhance the product. And they are in the process of negotiating in terms of with all of them and they, seeing that they have not basically come together as a body as yet, we said let's put some things on hold until, and we give it, we're hoping that everything can come together. If it comes together before Carnival, well, great, so we'll have those stuff. But so far it hasn't seemed that way, so that is why we said let's put it on hold and give time to have basically a sit down, a dialogue between Spice Mass and the Pretty Mass body. Because at the end of the day, let's, you know there are, um, if there are 25 bands in Grenada, sometimes I'm just giving, don't hold me to it, but let's say only about 12 of them are, is, are, is uh, let's say, considered a registered band. But we have to be considerate about the uh, 13 because all of them make the mass possible. And the two, um, let's put it, if you watch on the street parade on Monday, on Tuesday on the road, basically the, the so called who are not registered have bigger numbers. So we need all of that to be inclusive and not one body. So that's basically the rationale for it so far. The launch the appearances from the 2023 Spice Mask Queen contestants, the 2022 Groovy Monarch, Crave, Dash, Mr. Walkie, Temptress, Pinky Fabulous, to mention a few. Panorama Champions, Jab Jab, Shortney, Wild Indians, and Veco. Cultural enthusiasts and residents of Karakou and Spiti Martnik have just concluded a full weekend of activities in commemoration of the island's annual Maroon and String Band Music Festival. Details in this report. The three-day event, which ran from April 28th to 30th, highlighted the rich culture and tradition of the people, from morning rituals to smoked food to cultural performances from local and visiting groups at four main villages, including Hillsborough Square and Paradise Beach. The 2023 festival, which was on hiatus for three years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, welcomed hundreds of visitors from the mainland, neighboring islands, and international countries who journeyed to enjoy what the island had to offer. During the official opening ceremony, Minister for Karaku and Pitin Marknik Affairs and local government, Honorable Tevin Andrews, expressed pride in the level of support the festival has received. Minister Andrews pledged government support to ensure that investments are made and measures are implemented to keep the culture alive. He challenged the residents to preserve and enhance the island's rich cultural heritage. The community spirit is dying and we must do everything that we can do to bring that back. And of course, while bringing back the community together, building and enhancing our cultural heritage. The Ministry of Karakon Piti Matnik and the Government of Grenada, we are committed in ensuring that we preserve and enhance our cultural heritage. And I want to say this to our friends, to the villagers, and to the people of Karakon Piti Matnik in particular. We, all of us, have a responsibility to enhance and preserve our culture, heritage. You should not be leaving this up to the government alone. You should not be leaving this up to the politicians. We, the community, the island, the people, have that responsibility. CEO of the Grenada Tourism Authority, Petra Roach, commended the organizing committee for putting structures in place to ensure that Karaku and Piti Marknik remain the cradle of culture. 
but really important in terms of holding on to the traditions. And Karaku has earned the title as the cradle of culture. And we really continue to give commitment to ensuring that these traditions, which are so important to who we are as a people, to our integrity, et cetera, are honored. I think so often there are so many holidays and traditions which are forgotten and the purpose of which are forgotten. So we really want to make sure that the elders who are here continue to pass down to the youth and that we continue to really, really honor these lifelong traditions. Here are some of the highlights from the festival. Visitors, organizers, participants and officials are all satisfied with the display of culture in Karaku for the Maroon and String Band Music Festival. The event, which started out with low expectations due to a fire at the power plant on Friday morning, which left the island in complete darkness, ended on a high note with extraordinary performances from folk and cultural and string band groups and local bands. GIS took its microphone through the crowd to get some reactions on the final day of the festival. What we planned is being executed to our satisfaction. There are room for improvement, but we're satisfied that what we presented to the public is well accepted, and we hope to build on this for, for the um, festivals coming going forward. Very positive. Some people have given us um, ideas on how they think we can, we can improve for, for following years, but it's been very positive so far. They will enjoy, especially the cultural aspect of, of the festival. They want to see more culture being displayed, not just, not just music, but a lot, a lot of the culture. So they enjoy the drumming, the dancing, the, the mass and tools, the strings in the city. They are enjoying the culture, so they want to see more of that. But the reviews have been greatly positive. What I see is a celebration of, um, of, of our culture. And celebration, because you look at, the, at what happened last night, actually, um, up at the Botanical Garden, and all the, basically, all the performers were from with immediate vicinity, and it was local stuff promoting local culture. And I think that is extremely, is a page, is something that I've been promoting, and it's something I want to continue to promote, but it's been reinforced and confirmed by the behavior, the attitude, and the philosophy of the people behind the Maroon. You go to the to the to the, um, the Salaka at um, or the Maroon at Limle, and again all the music. But most of the ninety percent of the music played was actually local from local bands, live bands, music from Grenadians. You know, you hear Squeezy, you hear other people being played, and apart from from the bands are like in, in Kariku. And I think that speaks volume. Over the years, we have been been a part of Maroon. So with the resuming of Maroon, we feel good to be a part of it. But some of the kids were really excited about just coming out and have fun. I've been doing that like for over 30 years and I've never stopped. So it feels good to be a part of the culture, keeping the culture alive in Karaku especially. And um, Maple tends to be dying a little bit, so that's why I 
hold on to it. We have had a fantastic time. We've been to Bayerle on Friday and we enjoyed the smoke uh, food and the really amazing welcome there. It's incredible. And today, here at Paradise Beach, it's incredible. Music, sunshine, it couldn't be better. Absolutely our first time at Maroon. And we, we've never experienced this here in the Caribbean. It's incredible. I think it's very great. First of all, we went to Bialo. Bialo was very good. And we went to uh, the town and it was very good. Um, I think this is a festival that we need to continue to do. Also, it portray our African tradition, which is very great. Um, as a young man growing up in Karako, I witnessed the tradition from a very young age. Karako is special. Karako's unique attributes are its culture and its people, its tradition, its steeped in history. And so from, a t from, from us, we want to ensure that when we're promoting, when we're doing product development, we are either engaging the people and we're engaging people to come to understand our lifestyles, who we are as a people, right? But also in terms of ensuring that we understand that domestic tourism is important. And really and truly for Carrier Cool, domestic tourism is key because it means People moving within the islands, Green Indians coming to Karaku to support the different activities and events, which happens all the time. Four weeks ago, you couldn't find a flight to get here. The accommodation was booked up. If you didn't get to the Osprey early, you were going to get left. And those things signal that really and truly, after three years of the Maroon and Stringman Music Festival being on a hiatus, that we are really back in business. I think it's great. I, I think there was a brokerage. Um, when the the older Did generation actually left Carico and went that. abroad, there was a, a kind of a brokage. But since they returned, since that the there music? was a revival music, music of the man. maroon Excuse and me? the festivals in general, and I think now the young people are actually taking it up fantastically. I think this future is good is in good hands because not you, not you. I've I noticed since I came back, they actually start. Canada. If you think about the the not only the Where maroon, but the, the Shakespeare mass. You know? When yeah, I was yeah, growing up, uh, girls now. never used Who to take part, Germany? but now Anybody girls are taking Germany? part, and the young people are taking part. And I think it's in good hands. Karaku is our favorite island. Grenada is our place to be. We take a break. When we return, we look at Labor Day activities at Progress Park. My name is Afiba McQueen and the name of my business is Eden Farm Organics. I've been a farmer for about seven years. Uh, my inspiration was I have health issues and I had to change my diet. So buying the food was expensive so I had no choice but to start farming my own food. One of the biggest issues um, I think most farmers face is access to proper equipment and machinery and avenues to distribute our products. Now that I'm a successful beneficiary of the CES program, I can use the equipment that I receive to expand on my business and grow my company. In the next five years, I see Eden Organic Farms being heavily invested into agro-processing. Um, I see our products not only locally and regionally, but also international. It's a yes for CES. Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade and Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell are attending the coronation of King Charles III in London, United Kingdom. The coronation will be held on Saturday, May 6th at the Westminster Abbey. The delegation attending the ceremony will include Grenada's Resident High Commissioner in the United Kingdom, Her Excellency Keisha Abba Grant, Victoria Cross recipient Sergeant Major Johnson Bihari, and athletes Afi Fletcher and Lyndon Victor, among other prominent Grenadian residents in the United Kingdom. 
The Governor General and Prime Minister are also expected to attend a reception with His Majesty King Charles III during the visit. The delegation will return Sunday, May 7, 2023. Senator the Honorable Dr. Decima M. Williams, President of the Senate, has been appointed as, De as Deputy Governor General in the absence of Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade and Honorable Philip Talisworth, Minister for Social and Community Development, Housing and Gender Affairs, with responsibility for community development and housing, has been appointed Acting Prime Minister in the absence of Prime Minister Mitchell. Grenada's Minister for Labour, Senator Claudette Joseph, has given workers her government's commitment to stand with lives and livelihoods. She was at the time addressing her first Labour Day rally on May 1st at Progress Park in St. Andrew. In the face of, dev of the devastating pandemic, <clears throat> you, the workers, remained committed to the cause, continued to defend and develop our nation. And for this, our government says thank you to those workers who lost their jobs because of the COVID-19 pandemic, whether it was because your place of employment was closed down or because of decisions and policy positions of your former employers. This administration is committed to finding solutions and to ensuring that in future, workers will be protected so that such effects of events over which you have no control will be minimized. And finally, following a rigorous assessment and inspection process, Grenada has made its first shipment of mangoes to the United States in about 20 years. Details in this report from Mina Booker of the Ministry of Agriculture. After some 20 years of being unable to do so, the first commercial shipment of fresh mangoes left Grenada on Wednesday destined to hit markets in the United States. Over 4,000 pounds of the fresh fruit were shipped to the United States by well-known trafficker Patrick King following assessment by and subsequent issuance of his phytosanitary certificate by the Pest Management Unit. Our role in, in the effort is to inspect according to an agreement or a work plan um, with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, where today we are looking at at least 10 um, boxes out of just over 100 and at least we need to inspect at least 150 fruits in that shipment. Inspection is visual for ex external pests and also we have done some cutting um, looking for internal signs of, of pests and disease. Our two target pests today for the inspections are mango seed weevil and fruit flies, right? So we are cutting actually through the seed of the mango to see if there is any adult or larval or pupal stages of the mango seed weevil because that's where you actually find them. Thus far today, we haven't found any except for one, one single mango that had signs of damage internally, but we didn't, we were not able to see any weevil or larvae. So. We think so far that the shipment um, would meet its standard for entering the U.S. market for the treatment. That was Pest Management Officer Thaddeus Peters speaking to the Ministry of Agriculture's Public Relations Unit as a two-member team from his office conducted an inspection for visual and internal pests, particularly the mango cedar weevil and fruit flies. Peters said this was made possible through a thorough pest risk analysis conducted in collaboration with the United States Department of Agriculture's USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, APHIS. It would have involved making application to the U.S. For, um, to reconsider or redo a pest risk analysis. Um, back in 2017, the U.S. would have granted permission to golden apples, and one of the pests was the exact the fruit fly infestation and we make a, made application and they did the risk analysis and indicated that they will allow the, the fruits based on um, some treatment, you know. So we had the options of heat treatment or irradiation. Um, so their option was to um, allow it based on irradiation and they have granted it only for commercial shipments. So I just want to reiterate, passenger travel does not qualify 
for mango shipment to the U.S. is only commercial shipments that have made arrangements with, an, with a facility to have it treated before it goes into the U.S. market. So we have provided background information, um, including you know, the estimated quantities we might export, the time of the year we're likely to export, what are the prevailing pests we have on mango. We would have forwarded all that information that would have gone into the risk analysis. And um, now we had to also um, review the, the work plan that was prepared and, and sign off on the agreement. APHIS authorized importation of fresh mango fruit from Grenada into the United States back in February of 2023. All 108 boxes of mangoes were purchased from farmers and residents in St. Andrew by the experienced trafficker. Evan Alexander, the other member of the pest management team, offering support to King at his sorting and packing facility, explained that prior to the assessments, field visits were done in the parish to determine which areas are suitable for purchasing mangoes. Prior to the shipment, which is the first shipment to the U.S. commercially, we had done field visits of a number of farms in the St. Andrews Parish. So we try and cover the entire parish in terms like we did some in the northern side, middle and the southern side of the parish. Each of the 108 boxes shipped on Wednesday weighed a total of 40 pounds. The exportation of mangoes is a plus for farmers and traffickers like King, who is already involved in shipping of fresh fruits, including soursop. The lifting of the ban on the importation of mangoes will no doubt pave the way for farmers to increase their foreign exchange options and thereby improve their livelihoods. For the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Mina Booker. Thank you, Mina. And with that story, come to the end of the Government's Week in Review, looking at the period Monday, May 1st to Friday, May 5th, 2023. I am Sherian Noel.